yours. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order and uh, um, I'm gonna skip the cell phone thing because some of us are needing them. So uh, um, the moment of silent reflection over the last seven or eight weeks, it's uh, been a challenging time. And this weekend was probably one of the more challenging with the nice weather. Um, I think every everybody is up here from the reports I kept getting on the weekend. Uh, um, people launching boats at Twin Lakes and then not putting the things back. Uh, I went up and actually put the barrels back yesterday. Um, I don't know how we're going to keep up with that, but there's still another probably another couple of weeks of that to, to go um, at least. I have heard some different numbers, but we'll get into that later. But uh, um, I just want to thank everyone for uh, doing what they've had to do. It's been really challenging and uh, uh, we will get through it. But uh, <clears throat> if you can interest, if there's anybody that needs to declare, do it now. Seeing none. Um, we have the minutes from the regular council meeting of April 20th. If they're all in order, I'll look for a motion to uh, accept them. So moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? Jared. Okay, we're gonna move into delegations and we have one delegation, it's Jenna Trimble. Um, Jenna, welcome. Um, we haven't had done too many delegations on these uh, on Zoom, but no. Go ahead. You're welcome. I'm good to go. Let us know what's up. Okay. Oh, so frozen. I'm frozen. Shoot. You don't look old. Well. No, nope, you're fi you're fine, Jenna. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. My internet connection is unstable again, so I don't know what's happening here, guys. Bear with me if I if you lose me again. Okay, so um, we're just we were just down on numbers last year, and um, we missed a lot of our top fundraisers. So the carnival, the the Grattan tournament was canceled. Um, Celebrate Havoc is another thing that we do that was also canceled. Um, we also had a movie night that was rescheduled a couple times that just was gonna be fit in there last minute and it had to be canceled too. Um, and we were also doing a lot of sharing with some um, tournaments and stuff. So we were trying to compromise with the, uh, with the hockey league and um, they requested that when they had the Lions Hall open upstairs, they they would like it they would have liked it if we could close the canteen until they were done um doing their their thing and then um so we did that um and it was working out really well like i was we're getting along with them pretty good so and i i didn't realize that going into this that that it was such a tumultuous relationship that the figure skating had with the hockey so um yeah anyways they uh we were doing well and in, in that regard Sorry, interruptions here. My other half's working, so I gotta do this. Um, yeah, like, is there any questions that I can try, like, try and pinpoint that you guys have in regards to uh, why we, we would need the support? Yeah, I'm gonna open up the council. I know you're one of the ones that got nailed. Everything was in motion for your carnival and yeah. big fundraiser, but uh, um, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna open up the council because a lot of um, a lot might not realize how important the end of the year is for the skating club to get started the next season sure um has sure. anybody got any questions larry uh, not necessarily so much a question through you mr mayor but um what i was going to suggest that uh, re in referring to the uh, mount owing uh, by the club, uh, if maybe council would consider extending uh, the uh, bill until maybe um, till the late season, uh, or the start of the season for your skating club again, that would give you time to uh, still maybe organize uh, some of those events depending on the COVID-19 situation. But yeah. extend the payment until the fall um and on top of that uh, we don't know if yet there's some of the COVID ah, maybe ah. 
So I would leave that through, uh, um, Bob maybe could comment on that, I'm not sure what's available yet, but um, definitely the, the amount only, we extend the, the amount owing until the fall, until they get started back up again. And by that time, there may be some advantages uh, that they could take for anything they had planned. Yeah, Jenna, did you have an answer to that? Or you're just in your screen, okay. Yeah. So the thing is with that, and like, and that's amazing, and I appreciate that suggestion. However, um, by the time the fall comes around, we're now gonna be looking into n then additional <laughs> skating fees. Uh, and, and arena fees. Oh, you're okay. So we'll have a huge debt to start the season out with if we hold it till then. So that's my concern is, so it'll be a, a pretty big burden like on our shoulders starting out the new season um, with that. Another of the things that we did too, that we, we helped out Taylor Blakely um, get her license because we were short a coach last season. So she actually graciously volunteered um, all last year. She didn't get paid, um, which is absolutely like, incredible. Like you can't ask that to be that committed, like every week coming in and, and working with the kids for nothing. Um, so she did that. And then I guess she had done it the previous season too. So that's two seasons of working for free. So we, I, I talked to the committee and I said, you know, I think it's a good idea that we support her and her decision to want to have, um, get the coaching so that we can pay her. Um, so yeah, to, in, to back to where you were saying there about holding it off till the fall, like that's great. But, um, I just think it might be a big, burden on our shoulders and and if, if that's the way we need to go about it then we'll have to go about it that way but I was hoping that we could even get like you know a chunk or a portion of that uh waived that we just don't have to worry about it um because again like we'll have the fees in the fall we'll have to pay um and then to have that debt on top of us it, it, I think it might be a bit much but but yeah um, and we do have, a, I had spoke with them and had a meeting prior to all this COVID stuff and everything being shut down and they, um, the committee, and we all agreed that we would try and do some kind of like different opening, um, like carnival, not necessarily carnival, but something that the kids can go in and do their, um, their, their, the carnival pieces that they didn't get to do at the end of the year. They're all pretty devastated about that. So uh, we thought we would do some kind of opening thing open house and then that what that would do too is hopefully try and bring in some newer people they can come in they can see what the girl the kids do um thank you see what the kids do um at the end of the year for the carnival and then maybe that might encourage them <laughs> i know that might encourage them to want to join and sign up and you know they can come and watch it and i think we were thinking of, of, of having it be like a $5 entrance fee similar to the carnival at the end of the year and maybe make some money that way. I just don't know what that's going to look like at, at this point. Like everything's so um, uncertain as far as like how we're going to have people gathered. Like I don't even know how the rink's going to look, like how we're going to do that in, in the fall, right? Like I'm really um, concerned about that because like even with the schools and stuff, you can't have you know so many people in the room so I don't know how that's gonna look like everything's just so vague anyways yeah <laughs> sorry yeah, I don't know whether a decision will be able to make, be made today Jenna but I, I oh, this yeah. is good information and, and Ryan's got a report later just after you but Barry had a question and Dave was next after that yep. yeah through you Mr. Mayor to Jenna I don't think this would be any burden to you I think council Alice has explained it. Um, not that we don't want to pay right, right now, is, I think, is, is uh, out of the question. But um, come fall, there, there shouldn't be any burden on you because I'm sure the council supports you 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I know you guys would. Otherwise, I wouldn't have um, thought yeah. to ask. So yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know you guys are awesome. I have, I have nothing but great things to say. So I, I just really, um, we got that bill and we, if we had have paid it, we would have been in the negative. So, and then we would have nothing to start up in the fall. So when you, in the fall, you, you pretty much start with what we ended up with the previous season. Right. So if we end with nothing, we're going to start with nothing. Um, that kind of thing. So we were hoping to Hopefully you start with more than nothing. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we, got, we got time between now and then for to uh, 
for to deal with this and hopefully yeah. maybe you can have some uh, events where you can raise some money too so yeah yeah so yeah like the year end we kind of let yeah we left all that uh, to the end but that, i guess that's how they normally would do it so we would have the brian gratton tournament that would make quite a bit of money like i'm sure just that alone would have made the fees up yep. but yeah okay dave you're out thank you for your presentation jenna um i realized uh i got a lot of respect for anyone whether it's in the uh, figure skating or the mining hockey whatever that steps up for our community um unfortunately at this point in time i think it's a little premature to start paying bills that the council has to uh, justify to the taxpayer i think yeah. I agree that we should wait till fall, see how things work, and then mm -hmm. make a decision at that time. Okay. Hopefully, we'll get over this. Nobody knows, as you've already said, nobody knows what's going to happen. So I guess right. we we'll have to wait it out. But yeah, um, it's it's not a cheap situation for anyone. I mean, I I re I read your letter on Friday. I took it to heart. And I don't know a lot about figure skating, so I contact some of the parents that do, and uh, it's quite expensive from what they tell me. Oh, yeah. I don't want to put this burden on them. Some of them are not working right now, so yeah, at the time I I can't uh, move forward with this request. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. If we want to wait till the fall and then try and go from there, that that's fine too. I just um. Yeah, I would still like some kind of, hopefully some kind of support even then, I, I think. But we'll see. We'll see what happens, how things play out. And I did initially think uh, that we should raise fees. I don't know if we should go ahead with that now, but that was my intention um, with the new season after having a year of doing it uh, and seeing how things go um, and how they went. As far as fees and stuff go, um, I did have intentions of raising them. Not not a, a lot, but uh, enough that uh, it would cover, because um, we, we had issues with parents volunteering and I totally get it 100% where they're coming from, like they're busy and they don't have time and it makes sense. Um, but we do need the support of the parents. It's what runs the club. If not, then it's like, you know, a very skeleton crew and we are, bare bones running constantly. So, um, so yeah, in, in that regard and in raising the fees, I was hoping that um, those fees would help pay to have someone run the canteen because that is our, uh, our major fundraiser, like throughout the year consistently rate making money. So um, if I, if I can have students in there running it, then maybe some of these extra fees will pay for them to come in and, and, uh, and run it for us. Well, I guess, Jenna, thank you. I have the greatest uh, respect for your organization. You're doing a great job. Thanks very much. I appreciate it, guys. You guys yeah, are doing a good job. It's Hart nice had, to see how this is. <laughs> Jenna Hart had something there, and then... Uh, um, oh, sorry, Hart. Yeah, I just, um, I agree with the rest of council that um, at the moment, we're not at the point of handing out COVID relief checks. Yep. But, um, and so in terms of carrying the bill forward and, and you guys possibly running a few events um, and trying to pay it off that way, <laughs> um, I think I would tend to agree with that. However, I would like to just remind the rest of council that um, the figure skating club is in this position, not through any doing of their own, right? Um, we are the ones that closed the rink. That's the reason they couldn't have the carnival. So. You know, I think that should be taken into consideration in that, as Jenna said, the carnival is their moneymaker for the year. And through no fault of their own, and I guess really no fault of our, our council per se, but, um, you know, there are extenuating circumstances here that moving forward, I think um, maybe should be considered by council in terms of uh, how much of that bill actually gets paid. So I'd just like the rest of council to, to just consider that in that this isn't a, a situation where, you know, the, they spent the money or they mismanaged the money or anything like that. This is a, uh -oh. you know, a freak thing that's happened and uh, we, um, they're bearing, you know, the cost of this. Luckily, uh, our minor hockey and that escaped that they had most of their tournaments earlier in the year. So, um, yeah. I just, like I said, I just like to throw that out there for the rest of council to consider. Yeah. 
Okay, Wendelin, you had your hand up there, and then uh, I don't know if yeah. there's else. Yeah, just so Jenna knows that uh, council and staff have been working in the background um, on a bottle collection policy at the landfill sites. That awesome. looking at um, any returnables can be donated back to community organizations. So it has been mentioned your organization is one of maybe the potential applicants in the policy. So with COVID and everything, we really don't know when some things will be lifted, um, such as the beer store um, accepting empties again, et cetera. So we've kind of got these policies in the background ready to go after COVID's lifted. So maybe a possibility there that there could be some funding allocated uh, towards your bills, et cetera, and any future endeavors you have. But it's great to see that you're, you know, conscious about uh, what monies are owing. And I think council would appreciate that uh, um, information. So just maybe um, I would agree, like, you know, Relook at it in the fall and then see, you know, how things wash out with the reopening of businesses, etc. And then we can kind of try to figure something out going ahead. And I think council is um, very um, great in, in supporting some of the community um, organizations. Yeah, okay, thanks. Well, and I don't know, like, we're, we're pretty well into Ryan's report in. Uh um for the staff reports for information but uh um if you don't have anything to add ryan we will move on to the next thing but uh um jenna thanks i know this is your first year doing the taking over the club and appreciate you doing that and you jumped in with both feet and um i can relate to things just aren't normal and uh you're dealing with things that you normally wouldn't have to so um thanks for what you're doing and i do think that uh as council has said that um it's probably best if we put this off and and look at it as we come out of this uh problem that we're in don't sweat it i know you do about everything else and uh um yeah just we'll, we'll get through it and uh we'll have more discussion on it as the as we go through the summer um but hopefully you'll be all right for starting up in the fall and hopefully everything will be semi-normal so but thank you for making the presentation today it will help with ryan's report here uh um in a couple of two reports out so okay perfect thank you so much guys have a great rest of your day thank you thank you too we'll see you okay um, <laughs> i don't see any other delegations here so we'll uh um we'll move into uh staff reports uh for information and one of them is ray haynes uh fire chief uh incident summaries for february and march um ray couldn't be here today but uh um, all the information is there and uh so we could receive that report if uh moved by councillor webb seconded by councillor ellis um any questions or comments on that all in favor Carry. Okay, and we'll move into Ryan's report there with regards to um, community services. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, uh, good morning, uh, Mayor Martin Council. Um, I just thought I'd put a, a brief report together just to provide an opportunity for Council to discuss um, some of the community services that have been affected through the COVID-19 pandemic and, uh, and the changes that uh, we've seen through that. Um, one of the uh as council knows we we did close the um uh, the arena on march 14th um so at this point um there's been no discussion about uh reopening that up until you know we received some information from the province in terms of what that's going to look like um but the services that we did change at the transfer station with uh, only accepting uh, exact change and uh, only household garbage and not accepting any leaf and brush pickup and uh and construction materials i just thought that maybe um we could have a discussion at the council level to uh, look at um the potential of reopening some of those services at some point 
So, and then the other uh, the other topic uh, we're getting a lot of calls about is the, uh, a lot of questions around when are we going to reopen the boat launches. So, um, I, we may be a little early on that side, but uh, I just thought it would be a good opportunity for council to discuss that and. Uh, and kind of provide a little bit of direction to staff as well in terms of uh, what they what they would like us to do. Yeah, and normally these things are just for information, but there is some good questions or comments here that need to be addressed uh, um, as we move forward over the next couple of weeks. So, um, Deputy Mayor Duro and then Councillor Webb had a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, Ryan, do you see a problem? What problem do you see if we do? permit the brush to come in. I know there's, uh, I know a lot of repairs are saying, I can't get rid of my brush. Why can't we have it open? I don't have an answer. So perhaps you could shed some light on if it opened, how it would work, and would there be a problem with opening it? Okay, thank you, uh, Mayor Martin, Deputy Mayor. Um, so to go back to the reasons why we decided to not accept those materials was uh, in the beginning, of this uh, pandemic, we decided that trying to limit the amount of people that were visiting the transfer, ta uh, transfer station was our goal. Um, our, our also, uh, our goal was to um, only get exact change and not have to handle uh, cash in between the attendant and, and our customers. So um, that was the reason that they did it, just to reduce the amount of people coming there. Um, as long as, uh, residents are maintaining their physical distancing at the transfer station. Uh, if they were bringing leaf and brush um, yard waste to the transfer station, I don't really see how that would negatively impact us unless um, people were follows, following the physical distancing practices that we're, that we're asked to do. So, Well, thank you for that. And that's what I was referring to in particular was the brush. Um, we don't have the manpower to have someone stand there to make sure they do that, but is there any way that we could, I don't know what the answer is to put up signs or whatever in that area that yeah. only so many in there at a time. I, I don't have an answer, but I know that we have a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think there is some opportunities there and things are starting to, lighten in some areas um so with the with the brush now that i just don't the one part that was hard and we were thinking if we kept it open like they're starting this week to collect in the village so um you know so if it was collected at the if we were to start taking things in at the uh transfer station it'd be good for the township people the one thing it's it's there's a lot of people from the village taking their their brush to the to the uh transfer station and I'm not sure but we're paying for a service to be done in town and it's not if they're not taking advantage of that maybe we don't need the one in town just have the one at the transfer station in the future but that's for another day um we'll have to see how that plays out but uh, the, the brush is there and I think some others have said if we <laughs> take it it's just going to be on the side of the road somewhere so uh um I don't know Hart had a comment there and then Barry and Larry. Yeah, well, you just kind of hit on it there at the end, Jim. Um, I'd rather see it at the transfer station than in the ditches all across the township. And I think the longer we keep the dump somewhat closed, that's what's going to happen. Because people are out there doing yard work. They're, you know, doing little things, painting and whatnot. Life goes on. I understand we're in the middle of, you know, where we are, but at the same time, and in terms of the social, I think at, at the dump, people can practice the social distancing. I mean, they do it when they go to food land or they do it at these other stores that are still open. So I can't see why, as long as proper procedures are in place there, why we couldn't do that. Um, in terms of the boat launches, um, I'm getting a lot of comments on those. Um, Basically, what I'm hearing is, yes, peeps, uh, a lot of people would like to see them open, but they don't want us to be the first ones to be open in Peterborough County. So, and I'm hearing that from quite a few people, including uh, marina owners and whatnot. Like, um, basically, they'd be, they'd be fine if they were open today. 
but they don't want HBM to be the only one in Peterborough County so that we have all these people from other counties flooding here because we're the only ones open. Yet I am hearing fairly strongly from people in the community that it is time to start opening some of these things up, especially the things that are have to do with the outdoors that aren't really in confined spaces and whatnot. So, and um, just one other thing, Jim, that was uh, raised to me, and maybe you or Dave could uh, provide some insight into this. In terms of the fire ban, I know that's a provincial order. Has there been any talk in terms of lifting that and why that was put in place in the first place? It was put in place for gatherings. Um, that's one of the things that they were trying to stop. And it basically, it's a region of the province. It didn't even, I, I don't even think Lakefield is included in it. Um, Apaduro Dummer is in it, but they decided to do their whole township, makes it easier to uh, monitor. Um, yeah. These things will that, start changing soon, but uh, it, it, we're just following what the province says. We can't do anything with these. So it's the same as the boat launches. I, I have my own feelings as far as why they're allowing the marinas to start uh, preparing boats because I was told last week that it probably would be the end of May before the boat launches would open up. Um, that being said, I, the marine owners were saying, don't come to us on the 12th of May and say that we're opening for the long weekend because the boats won't be ready. So they did re move that back to, the, to today. Uh, midnight last night, they were allowed to start servicing boats. So let's hope that you know, they're looking at relaxing it a little sooner than later. Um, I don't want to try and, that was part of my report as far as the meeting last week. He said, keep an eye out um, about marinas. And sure enough, on Friday, they announced that they were uh, opening at midnight last night, same as for lawn care and all those things. But uh, um, so we're just doing what they say. And I, I do hope that, you know, things are starting to, to lift a, they might as well um nobody's paying attention anyways it, it's really frustrating that it's an entitled society right now so everybody thinks that they can just do whatever they want and uh, it's unfortunate but uh, i'm not going to get on about that barry if you had something and then larry yeah social distancing um i think everyone's respecting that or, or most people are and that the uh, at the landfill or yeah at the landfill with the uh, leaves and brush like I've had many comments from different people around in the township, and I have to agree with with Hart there that you don't want to see it in the in the ditch. And uh, if they respect social distancing, um, our employees don't have to touch it at all. They know where it goes. It's the same place every year down there, so I can't see as that being a big problem. I think there is an issue with how much we have there. We're against our CFA right now, if I remember. Um, it's, or it's awful close anyway, so I think that's being cleaned up in the next couple of weeks, Ryan. Yes, it is. We're working on getting that uh, removed over there. We have to get it off the site. Yeah. So. Okay. Larry? Yeah, just a um, few comments on the topics here. Uh, first of all, in regards to the brush and leaves, I agree with council. I think it's time we opened that up. I, I would think that some good signage at the entrance there uh, would prevent anybody that could possibly go up talking to Kevin. They just go in and go to their left, get rid of their brush and leaves. Uh, maybe some good signage there to um, direct that. Uh, in regards to the firefighters, uh, the fire ban, um, that was put on, we got to think of our fire department, our firefighters. Um, I totally agree that that should be left on um, for that reason alone, thinking of uh, the fire department itself. Um, and the boat launch, uh, I, I agree with what was said earlier there, but I believe uh, Councillor uh, Hart Webb that the the launches should stay as all county um, boat launches are when everybody removes the, the uh, ban uh, and opens up then we would follow suit but uh, for us to follow uh, or go ahead of the plan here and open up our it's only going to create issues so i agree i think we should leave them closed until the rest of the uh, counties 
uh, boat launches are open. Yeah, okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Giro. Yeah, this is my second question, and that'll be also. Ryan partially uh, uh, answered it. I know we have a great uh, amount down there that has to be removed, Ryan. And if we had a timeline, do we remove that ourselves? Yes, we do. Yeah, so we're supposed to remove it. We're supposed yeah. to remove it once a year. Uh, that's what our agreement is. So, if we had a timeline from you and your department that that could be removed, then we could advertise that would we be when we could open the transfer station up for yard waste and brush again. Is that possible? Yeah, that's possible. Um, we also do. Uh, we removed. Uh, the majority of the scrap metal there as well so we we have um we have more room over there for new uh leaf and brush waste so if we wanted to utilize that area we could do that as well so but i was under the impression that we under our agreement are kind of at our capacity for brush right now is that not right Mayor? yeah uh, that's 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 correct yeah it's just it's more based on the timeline of the of the year like we have a certain amount of time that uh, the okay. brush can remain on site and then it has to be removed. So, All right, but thanks. we're, uh, that will be taken care of. So, Perfect. so with your signage, it is five or ten dollars a truckload to put to take brush and, and leaves in there. Is that not right? He'll have to use his bucket. It should be. I pay for it. So, <laughs> I'm, I would think it is. I'll have to get back to you on that, Jim. Okay. Yeah. It's five dollars or ten dollars a truckload. So, um, there should be some money coming in for it and the bucket can be there. So anyways, not, nothing's free these days. So anyways, okay. We'll, uh, um, is there any more questions with regards to that, uh, that report? Oh, so just one last one, Mr. Mayor, Ryan, then you will, you will get back to council with when you might be able to remove that and when, It'll open up. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Barry. And could it open soon? Like if we made a motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then maybe I'll make a motion. Then. We open it up. <clears throat> okay, as soon as you can there, Ryan. And uh, so moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Webb. Do you have a question, Art? No. Okay. All in favor of the uh, motion? Gary. Okay. Next, we'll move into the uh, staff report with regards to figure skating. We dealt with most of it, Ryan, but uh, that's a good report. Um, good information on there. Uh, I don't know whether there's much more we need to talk about. Um, I think it was pretty well dealt with. You okay with that? No, I'm fine with that. I basically just took the uh, information that uh, was originally requested and just put it in a staff report for you to just give you the facts and the information that we had so that yeah. council could look at that situation and make a decision on it. So. Yeah, there's a lot of money there and I know they cut back on some hours because uh, um, I know when I ran it, we had probably three nights a week and I think they're down to one and a half now or something like that. So. Um, anyways, it is kind of a struggle, but uh, it's a good program. So, okay, so a motion to receive Ryan's report with regards to the figure skating fees. Moved by Councillor Pomeroy, seconded by Deputy Mayor Giro. Any questions? All of, did you have a question, Larry? Yeah, so, so does staff need direction regarding the bill extension? Do you want to, did you want a motion there, Bob? Yes, please. We prefer to have some direction through you, okay. Mayor Martin. And I would make that motion through you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make that motion to direct staff uh, regarding the bill for an extension. Extend it to the, towards the fall. Yep. Oh, we have two motions on the floor now. What was the first motion was to accept Ryan's report. Just receive the report was the first motion. Oh, okay, sorry. Take that one. You want to remove that one until we get a motion here for the well, yeah, just remove it completely. Who who moved it there? Sorry. Very moved it. I second it. Sorry, I'm breaking up here a little bit, Dave. Okay. First motion was moved and seconded. 
Okay. So the mover and seconder, would they be okay to remove that? And we'll we'll make a new motion here to direct staff. Do we do we need to remove it, Tim? Maybe we could accept or that. Add it to it. Whatever you want to do. Do you want to add that to your motion, then, Barry? That uh, um, we make direct staff. Motion. Yeah, that's we need to make a new motion. Okay, bear with me here. I'm breaking up here. Um, Bob, you got a question. Go ahead, Bob. Through you, Mayor Martin, we can we can leave the motion, the original motion as it was presented to receive the report, and we can add a second motion uh, if council wishes with some action item. Okay. All right. So we have the first motion on the floor. All in favor of the first motion then? That's carried. And the second motion, Councillor Ellis, would be that we uh, direct staff to uh, extend the, uh, the payment for that into the fall until we know where we stand. Is that good with you? That's good. Do we have a seconder for that? You need a timeline. Yeah, do you, you want like July or August, something like that? When, what's good for you? Fall, don't start till so. October. September. Yeah. I, was, I was gonna say probably September would. So don't make them pay, okay, that's good. You know, it, it could stay on the books and then we only have to really worry about it at year end for the auditors. Okay. I know what she's saying about not feeling comfortable going into the year with $3,000 over your head. Right. Because uh, that's when their, their money's going, but okay. Yeah. And then we'll probably know what's going to happen with the province and the bottle po mm -hmm. policy and all that stuff. So September is the deadline for the, the motion that we extended to September and uh, Art, go ahead. Well, I was just going to second that with a question. Sure. For yeah, um, maybe Wendland. Wendland, has, has there been any discussion with all this money that's being handed out for any relief for organizations like that? Like I know it's mostly small business and and individuals, but I mean, and I guess I'll get into it later when we talk about the virtual town halls last week, but have you heard anything about like organizations like this being able to apply for for any kind no, of I haven't heard anything come out across from the feds or the province yet okay. to deal with any of the smaller organizations. It's most, mostly just businesses that have a HST number or a payroll number. Thank you. Okay, so we have a mover and a seconder. All in favor of that motion? So this carried. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we'll move into correspondence and uh, um, the only thing, there's no action items. The one thing there is the North River Bridge. Construction is uh, started as far as, uh, if you have any questions with regards to the netting that's hanging off the bridge, that's to keep the birds out. If a bird's nest gets in there, the project will be stopped. So um, that's why they do that at all these bridges before construction in the spring is uh, to try and keep everything out of there so there's no, no stoppage. So. Um, that's going to be a good project to get out of the way. It's been on the books for a few years now and uh, um, it's going to be good to get her done. So um, is there any other correspondence there council wish to discuss or seeing not, no, Bob? Through you, Mayor Martin, I would just like to comment on a couple of items in that list. Uh, the first item, community safety and well-being plan. Uh, there, there is a group uh, that has been struck in Peterborough County. It's the CAOs uh, and the uh, OPP and some social services uh, staff. Uh, that group has been meeting and the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan uh, project has begun. So there is an open file in that. And at some point this year, uh, I know there has been an extension to that deadline, obviously, as the letter suggests, but at some point that uh, project will come to council and it may have a budget implication for next year. Uh, but that file is in process. So that's just an update for council on that item. Um, the other item is item three in the list, um, information from the Ontario Clean Water Agency. With respect to things being flushed down the toilet, um, there's a lot of things that are going down uh, into the sewer that shouldn't be going down. Um, this has become a problem, <clears throat> excuse me, this has become a problem throughout uh, the entire province, of course, with everyone being home, 
uh, public works departments throughout the province are having an issue with a lot of things going down the drain that shouldn't be going down the drain. Um, and there's a real issue with respect to uh, what are called flushable wipes. And the industry is quite concerned that that's a misnomer and those name, that name should be changed. Those flushable wipes are in fact not flushable and shouldn't be going down the drain. Um, and they are causing some, some uh, great problems, not only for public work staff, but I would say for private homeowners. Um, you can get into a real problem on your own uh, private property with those uh, if that piping gets clogged up. Uh, so just, uh, just a, a suggestion to everyone, don't be flushing things down down the toilet if it doesn't belong there. Um, and the message is it's, it's human waste and bathroom tissue, otherwise known as toilet paper. It's the only thing that should be going down the drain. Okay, thank you. Um, any other comments with regard to correspondence? Councillor Ellis and then Councillor Durow, or Deputy Mayor Durow, sorry. Just regarding the comments that uh, Bob just spoke to there, I was wondering if we should or could do some information um, to the general public regarding that. I know people should know, yeah. um, but some way maybe get that information out that that's what's happening and the cost associated with it at our uh, treatment facility. I did see something last week, but uh, go ahead, Bob. Right, through you, Mayor Martin, that notice has been posted on our website and was also distributed through social media. Um, with respect to the cost, that's a good suggestion. I think maybe we can, uh, we can look at that. Um, and I don't know if the supervisor of infrastructure wishes to add anything to that, I'm not sure. If you Okay. Deputy Mayor Giroux. Thank you, Mayor. No, I, I thank you, Bob, for that. That's all I was going to say, um, that uh, I did see it on social media last night, and it is on their website, and I think it's, it should be there. So thank you, Larry, for that. Okay. So a motion to uh, receive the correspondence. Deputy Mayor Giroux, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, we'll move into uh, Councillor Activity Reports. Um, okay, say, oh, that's not me. Not me. Me. I guess I didn't warn about the cell phones. Sorry. Anyway, uh, no, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I, uh, so the re reports here, just bear with me while I catch up. Um, so we have, uh, are you at the uh, virtual meetings last week? Yeah, we, um, me and Bianca were on two meetings last uh, Wednesday night and Thursday night with MPP Dave Smith. Uh, Wednesday night was um, non-retail businesses and Thursday night was the retail businesses just for the county of Peterborough. Um, as you guessed, probably most of the questions uh, surrounded uh, the timing of this reopening and um, what exactly the reopening will look like when we do take phase one of the reopening. Um, there's a lot of comments about that. Um, a lot of comments um, from people about people that are slipping through the cracks of the, whether it's the provincial funding or the federal funding. A um, uh, couple of cases, just one that I heard was um, person still working, um, they're making $15 an hour, yet they're paying someone $10 an hour to watch their kid all day. Now, if they went off, took the time off from their job, they would qualify for the funding. But since they're still working, they don't qualify for the funding. And the reason they explained to me they're still working is because they're afraid if they went off work that it might affect them in the future with this job, which is understandable to me. But anyways, a lot of cases like that, and like I said, in terms of people uh, slipping through the cracks in the funding. Um, Bianca, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, that about covers it. They did mention the rural areas having internet issues. 
to yeah. do their online business as well. Yes, which which I think uh, Dave brought up the uh, the EORN funding to them. So, but I think from the sounds of it, they want it done yesterday. They're <laughs> so. Well, it gives it gives the people a, a real eye opener when they think they can come up here and run their business. And we've been saying it for years that it's uh, it's a struggle. I'm surprised with the schools now using the uh, online stuff that it hasn't crashed. I, I really thought over the last little while that the uh, internet would have crashed around here with uh, everything that's come on board. But uh, they have stepped it up, from what I understand last week with Mary Monsif and. Uh, um, and all these loopholes and things that it was put to me last week that they're uh, building the airplane while they're flying it. So there is going to be little little flaws, but they will catch up with the people afterwards. But the ones like you're talking about, sure, there's going to be some issues around some of these things. But uh, um, I thought know. I thought it was I thought it was uh, very well done. Uh, Dave uh, Dave's very open. Um, I thought he did a really good job answering people's questions and being honest with them. Um, I know, I think I've spoken with you, but, um, about this gym, but, um, for the rest of council, uh, he expressed a number of times that anything was on the table in terms of getting this economy reopened. And, uh, one of the interesting things that he put out there a couple of times was, uh, a possible moratorium on the HST for, uh, maybe a six month or 12 month period. So I thought that was interesting. And just one other thing that the real difference to me between the two meetings, I thought one was retail, like I said, so it'd be your stores and whatnot. One was non-retail marinas, tourist attractions. Um, retail businesses seem to think they'd be okay. Like they're obviously they're going through a hard time now, but once this, they can turn the corner and come back. A lot of the non-retail businesses uh, referring to say Stony Lake cruises and whatnot, um, they were really worried that even with the limited opening in June, um, it, it, they, they might not open at all this summer. It might be better for them just to, to keep it shut and take the loss and then move on to next year. So, which is disappointing and hopefully we don't reach that stage, but yeah, uh, interesting comments. I think there's a lot looking that way. Um, any other questions for Hart? Um, seeing none. Okay, well, thanks, Hart. That's uh, if there's any more of them pop up that you can be a part of, and thanks, Bianca, for uh, taking part in it. I know they were after hours, and um, that's good. That's good to keep us updated. So, um, next we had uh, Councillor Pomeroy. He had a report from the town to be uh, source water. You you had a meeting, a virtual meeting, didn't you? Yeah, we did, Tim, and uh, it. Um... I'm going to wait until we get the minutes back from that before I, I uh, make a report. That's good. Okay, and Dave, Deputy Eastern Trail. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. I thought it would be fitting to give you just a verbal update on where we stand at EOTA. Um, all our staff are still working from home, three staff. Our uh, EOTA continues to, uh, our trails are open, and we continue to have our maintenance crew travel the trails to plug any culverts, pick up any brush whatsoever. Um, so the maintenance side of it is going well. Um, the bridge east of Camelford, if it's not completed at the moment, it's not going to be very long until it is completed. That was a reconstruction. We have four other bridges to do, and hopefully they will be done this year due to the circumstances that we're going through today they're not being worked on at the present time. So our sales permit, uh, permit sales are on par with any other year. They seem to take um, real jumps from about Wednesday to Sunday each week. So we're very happy with what's going on there. Um, the Eastern Ontario Region SAVE team may have a lot to do with the sale, sale of our permits. Um, the SAVE team stands for Snowmobile ATV Vessel Enforcement, and they have a, an Eastern team from the uh, from Kingston area. And the lead instructor on that is Mr. Sh uh, Constable Sean McGaffron, and he runs that unit. 
Um, they've been out on the trails laying quite a few charges. Um, you have no permit, that's a trans trespassing charge. Of course, you have to have the insurance, no alcohol, proper safety equipment, and so on. So I think the word's getting out in the eastern region, and uh, I'll be in contact hopefully again uh, this week with uh, the uh, EOTP officer from that region. On a whole, it's a good story for EOTA. Things are running smoothly. We haven't had any problems thus far. And I think the enforcement has a big uh, role to play in that. So everything's moving good for us. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and I had several meetings last week again with uh, um, either virtual or, or teleconferences. Bob and I took part in a joint police service meeting last um, Wednesday, I think it was, or Thursday. Um, anyways, uh, it was with all of the, uh, all of Peterborough County uh, um, municipalities. So it wasn't specific to just ours. Uh, that'll be happening in the future. We're just figuring out how we're going to do it. If we're just going to do online or a teleconference uh, for four half block Belmont Methuen because we have to do four a year. Um, they did report that B and E's were up in the first quarter. Um, they had a real praise for their crime units and their accomplishments. They've been doing really well at uh, solving some of these cases. Um, they did talk about the black cats because that's a county thing that. Uh, there's a bunch of us want to get that, and uh, I think Bob was going to look after calling in to uh, make sure our order was in. We were, I was under the, I thought it was just they were ordering it and we were going to just wait for the bill, but uh, they wanted the individual municipalities to order it, and then the bill will be, and it's like a three or four thousand dollars savings by going in with the group. So, um, so it's a, it's a good deal there. The one thing that they did say, and I've done it several times over the last couple of weeks is when people call me about somebody doing something wrong, I just say call 911. And then you get frustrated when maybe they don't make it to the place. So they, they are pushing the, they have a 188 number. And if, if council wants to get that later, uh, it's, a, it's 188 310 1122. Um, that goes right to the OPP dispatch instead of the uh, 911 where it goes to another dispatch and there's, it, it just makes more uh, places to go through. By the time it gets to them, it's probably over. Um, so this one's a direct line, and uh, it's a good thing for any you know fire reporting or uh, well, not the fire, but the uh, um, the camping and the things with the boat launches. Um, that's the number to call, and they'll get right there. Um, I talked to Chris on Friday, and he was. Uh, he just wanted to reaffirm that our boat launches were still closed and they were going to patrol them this weekend. They can't be everywhere. I did have some calls yesterday about Twin Lakes and uh, unfortunately, it's not too hard to pick out who it probably was. It's not that big a lake that a pontoon boat got launched. There's probably only one on the lake right now, um, but I don't think that works as far as um, telling them that they're not privileged, that it was closed and uh, they shouldn't have been using it. But uh, Anyways, that's uh, um, for the joint service policing. I don't know whether you have anything to add to that part of it, Bob. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, through you, Mayor Martin. Other than uh, it, those were good meetings. Very detailed, very lengthy, but uh, there's a lot of good information there. And I, I think the key point uh, for us was that one triple eight number, mm -hmm. um, and that is going to be on our website, and we will be advertising that number. What's that number again, Bob? Mayor Martin, I'll defer to you because I don't have it written in front of me. 188-310-1122. Thanks, Jim. So um, the other meeting uh, Wednesday night was uh, Dave Smith and um, he, he had been, I don't know, Thursday night because I think he did the one with you guys. Uh, um, anyways, it was, uh, we're all dealing with the same thing. Everybody got the same complaints and uh, um, the questions were all around when are we going to get rolling and uh, every, there's a system they've got in place and and I'm sure over the next week we're going to the first phase uh, will be implemented and that takes two to four weeks 
if you went by the numbers and what uh, you know the third phase um, could be three months out and it had some things about concerts and arenas and uh, they may not be open fully and I really think this year is a write-off for a lot of things and Jenna had some points there as far as the arena when it opened I hope um, that could be about the time when the next wave comes through um, so hope we don't know what to expect but uh, um, we're all in it for the same, we're dealing with the same issues all over the county and uh, we're doing the best we can. And it's getting to a point right now that people don't like what we're saying, but uh, I think we have to just toe the line and, uh, um, you know, let things take their course here. And uh, I think we've done a really good job and it's, uh, and it's showing in the numbers and that's what they're trying to say now. Um, so, and then uh, Miriam's, uh, uh meeting was after dave's and uh you know it's the same thing that we hear from in the paper and everything by the time i get to you here a lot of this stuff is dated and you've already uh um seen it on the news they just kind of give the highlights of the things that are coming or the things that he talked about the one thing she did say with these uh the canadian canadian emergency business account uh that grant that they were doing there was fifty thousand businesses applied at that time and there was still they were still rolling in so um that that meeting has like 16 or 18 people on it and it's a teleconference so it's a it's a challenge to you kind of got to jump in if you want to talk and uh um fleming and and uh trent were on there and fleming they're using their dorms for for frontline workers to uh stay in if they got to get away from their family and trent is I forget how many they have in there, but they have quite a few frontline workers that are taking advantage of that to stay away from their family. Um, and then the uh, um, Fleming is actually doing a lot of spring and summer online courses. They're almost full on it or something. So, or they're gonna take the full summer um, of doing that. And that's what's happening with a lot of businesses. I think when we come out of this, there's gonna be, it's gonna look a lot different. There's gonna be a lot of things happening that you, you might have thought might happen years down the road, but I think it's just speeding things up to get with technology and uh, um, even with people working from home, there's a lot of that going on right now that uh, it's working and people, you know, things are going to look a lot different in the future. So um, they were the main calls I had last week and then the rest were all ratepayers and uh, not understanding some things or, you know, just wanting clarification. So. Um, that's all I have to report with them. So, uh, is there any questions or, or comments? Seeing none. Oh, Larry? Larry? Uh, not a comment or a question. Um, I was a little late getting this to Bob uh, before print time, but uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, they're in the process of uh, hopefully setting up video conferencing for a future meeting. Uh, uh, I explained how ours were working and um, anyway there's some business that needs to be dealt with through Chamber of Commerce and so hopefully in the near future uh, some of the staff or the, um, uh, the members that are tech um, savvy are preparing to set up a Chamber of Commerce video meeting to deal with the commerce for the summer, uh, talk about students whether we even have students, uh, the funding from COVID for students, apparently that can affect applying for. So anyway, a number of things, and when we get it organized, I'll report back. That's good. Did I see Hart's hand up or Dave? No, I, I was Hart. just going to move, move. Okay, move by Councillor Webb that we uh, received the uh, report and seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? Carry. Okay, um, next, uh, we, we don't have any uh, written notice of motion. Is there any oral notice of motions to put forward? Seeing none, um, other business. Uh, see if I can catch up now. <clears throat> Not very good at multitasking, so bear with me here. It's a little bit different, but anyway, so we do have a list of uh, other business here and uh, in a wonky computer so okay um
So we had um, Councillor Ellis, you're, you're with the Munns Bay and Belmont Lake. You wanted an update or? Uh, just uh, basically some comments. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Bob and staff um, for their dedication to trying to get something resolved to get this piece of equipment out of the lake. Um, it was a bit of a frustration to some degree because uh, we went from agency to agency before somebody would actually uh, step up and, and uh, force some uh, action there. Um, also, I'd like to thank uh, you, Mayor Martin, for taking the issue to uh, uh, Dave Smith to try to make somebody uh, react. Um, so the, where it sits right now, as you've probably read from Bob's report that was sent out on Friday, nothing has changed. Um, it's still kind of hard to accept the fact that they're leaving this issue in the hands of the owner of the equipment. Um, right down to the possibility of spills, they're suggesting he buys uh, spill pads or some piece of equipment, but if it's a major one, then report it. Like it's, it's hard to believe that this thing is happening and uh, those individuals that live in the immediate area that are very, very concerned uh, about the water as well as all Belmont Lake College Association members are. Because um, uh, in the immediate area, a lot of people, for an example, use the lake for water. And um, it's just hard to believe that they're leaving this in this guy's hands to get it out of there without creating an issue in the water. But uh, I would like to thank Bob and, uh, and staff for um, their input there and, and keeping us a, a, appeased of what's going on. Um, so I just wanted that out there for, for everybody to know that um, it's, a, it's a hard to understand thing that it's been kicked around and who is responsible for the force uh, this, this piece of equipment come out of there because it's not just there for, uh, like I was notified three weeks ago um, through an email and so it was obviously in the water or on the lake in the ice time because it's gone through the ice, it had to be, to be out that far in the water and to be that long without having some corrective action taken that it's just hard to understand and that's how the people feel at uh, Belmont Lake. Yeah, I did talk to MOE on Friday night uh, after Bob's email. I called that number on there, and because uh, uh, Bob and I were both surprised how how slow things are happening, and uh, um, so anyways, I talked to the guy for about a half an hour on Friday night and told him it was totally unacceptable what we're reading and and hearing. And uh, um, today I'm going to be trying to get a hold of MNR. That's who he directed me to. It's an MNR thing. More the MOE has nothing yet until the next, something comes into it. We were under the same impression that you know the lights would be flashing, they'll be running down the road, and uh, they'll be getting this thing out. And uh, um, some of the the comments in the directive uh, are totally unacceptable, and uh, we may have to take some stuff on ourselves here uh, if something doesn't happen this week. So. Um, I had Hart and I had uh, Dave. Go ahead, Hart. Well, you know, I I know I texted you there, Jim, on Friday about that, and I think at some point, as you said, we're going to have to take this into our own hands because this is completely unacceptable to, to have a piece of machinery like that laying in the lake when they've known about it for close to a month now, and all we're getting is lip service. It, and like it started off with, oh, it's the MOE's, you know, responsibility. Now they're shifting it back up onto the MNRF. It's just a, a big game of ping pong. Meanwhile, the people who are actually living on the lake are the ones that are going to have to deal with, you know, the spill or whatever comes of this. And and I think they deserve better. Um, I don't know whether, you know, I, I threw it out there to you, whether we have to go to Checks News or something to get some kind of publicity about this and get some movement but we can't just continue like this should have happened three weeks ago like this this should have been out of there and that's what I mean I don't want to go through another week and come back you know two weeks from now to another meeting and go yeah it's still there 
because what happens this week, Hart, um, if nothing happens by the weekend, we'll have to talk about the next, the next, our move on that. Uh, I had heard that Saturday something was going to happen, but I didn't, nothing, okay. And moving forward, I think we should, uh, maybe if we could get staff to write a letter to, well, maybe it's MNRF and MOE, so we can have a sit down with them. I know I, I saw an email, I don't know, is AMO going ahead or is that going to be virtual AMO or like, is there a way we can have a sit down with uh, the minister or the, the deputy minister here and get some answers as to why this was uh, dealt with in such a poor fashion? We'll see what Dave has to say there, but I, I think Dave Smith is going to have to get that, that part of things moving. Um, Dave, you, you had a comment there? Well, I'm, I'll just, uh, I guess, uh, repeat what I've said in emails before. In the, in the first place, this went in through the ice. They tried to cover it up. I don't know why Crow Valley is not taking the lead on this. The amount of money we pay Crow Valley, why does our council have to do this? Crow Valley should have been the one to step in. If it's not their problem, at least they should be getting a hold right ministry to solve them and they there should have been at the very least some environmental booms put around that piece of machinery right from the very beginning so i'm very frustrated with this and i'm surprised that the Belmont lake cottage association isn't pounding on somebody's door and that would be ours so i'm i i can't stress how much how disappointed i am with pro valley that's that's all there is to it Crow Valley, Crow Valley has been dealing with it as much far as they can, but they have nothing to do once they go off the shoreline. It's not their responsibility. And that, so they're dealing with the MOE and the same people we are. And, and I think they're surprised too. They'll be responsible for any destruction on the shoreline or uh, anything on, if there was no permits and things were done out of line, that'll be what they're in charge of. But right now they've contacted or put us in contact with people that, uh, we should be and, and they're they're with us on it but um it comes down right now to mnrf and uh, that's what the moe told me um but i think if nothing's happened by this week uh we're gonna have to have some discussion because if nothing's happened by friday i think we're gonna have to possibly take the lead here and uh i will be talking to mnrf today um to see where it's going uh, but it should have happened a long time ago. Nobody can disagree with that. We're all on the same page there. Um, it's frustrating. And uh, they said this is the, it's not like it's a huge, I forget how the guy worded it. It's not like it's a big tanker or something like that. It's just an excavator. So, um, Hart? Well, I threw it at there before, Jim, but why can't we get the media involved with this? He said you can. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Uh, he's doing what he has to do and they're doing what they can do but uh um it's uh, yeah he, i know everybody's concerned okay. and it doesn't okay. sound i i understand and i'm not going at you with this so basically he told you it's acceptable for a loader just to continuously sit in a lake it's on the directive as far as uh, we can spend a ton of money and take a lot of time to get a, a um, consultant okay. in to try and look at how we're going to take this out of there somehow uh, or we can just get at it and get it out of there and that's what they're trying to do somehow i think if this was in front of his his dock and if he has a cottage at a lake the response would be a lot different possibly i don't know dave i'll have my second uh, go at the same subject it might be the ministry of natural resources at this point in time but as we went through the court case with the docks and the ministry, how did they phrase that? Anything sitting on the bottom under that dock is the municipalities. So what are they going to tell us now? Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Me either. So, okay. Is there uh, any more uh, questions or Larry? <clears throat> Just the last comment. Uh, uh, Gary Moulin, um He's the representative that's been communicating with Bob from the MECP states that they will get back uh, to uh, Bob regarding a site visit. But that email came Friday. And so we know that they wouldn't have been there on the weekend. And I know from a call this morning that the equipment is still in the water. 
Okay, and that's who I talked to on Friday night. He was really good. He called me back. I didn't really expect him to call me back so fast, but that's who I talked to for about a half an hour, 45 minutes on Friday night. So, um, and he, yeah, so let's see what happens here. Uh, he, I'm sure he's going to, you know, do what he can as far as getting the right people on it. So, um, okay. The next, uh, the next was, uh, um, ATVs and dirt bikes, Dave? Yeah, okay. I could have did this other than that would be on my EOT report. Um, I don't know where to start this other than that I did use your 1888-310-1122 number myself the other day in regards to ATVs, dirt bikes in our municipality. And I'll start by saying I don't think anybody in our municipality worked harder than myself and the crew that we put together back in 2006 to create a ATV bylaw for this municipality. And we did that so there would be some uniform rules and regulations that we would follow to better enhance the public's um, awareness and, and acceptance of ATVs. This is getting right out of hand. We have ATVs, dirt bikes, side by sides, uh, running up and down roads that they're not supposed to be on, um, just causing throughout municipality. I owned, as I said, the OPP the other day myself, and I'm encouraging everyone, whether you own an ATV or an off-road bike or not. If you see an infraction, phone that number, 188-310-1122, and report it. Because as hard as I've worked to get that bylaw, if it don't stop, I'll work just as hard to rescind it. So you better get out there and start phoning the police, because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the phone calls. I'm sick of the witnesses. There. there is supposed to be permits on all bikes. To go from trailhead to trailhead, not use the municipality roads at will. Bikes on 46 Highway, Lenny Road 46, pardon me, 7 Highway, 30 Highway, it's out of hand. And I don't think the municipality should have to put up with it. So I'm giving you fair warning, not counsel, but to the public if you see an infraction, you better phone it in or you're going to lose some of your privileges if you own them. And that, it's not right. That came up in the police service meeting uh, too, Dave, and it's, uh, it's all over the county, same problem. Um, and the police are so busy trying to, there's so many armchair policemen out there right now that uh, they're pulled in every direction. And they said they're busier than they've ever been trying to deal with all these infractions, not just in ATVs and everything, um, lots of civil things going on and um, everybody's dealing with the same thing with the ATVs and dirt bikes and it was brought up by uh, several so um, and it and it is all the time as far as uh, um, even at our police service board and this has been creeping up but right now there's so many people home um, and abusing it and I know my road is the same and uh, um, I see lots going by yesterday uh, the dirt bikes are racing up the road we do call the number and that's what we got to do is just keep on to this thing. And uh, yeah, it'll affect things in the future if it keeps going. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Mayor. I will add to that that I did contact Peterborough County also, the CAO, to make sure that the county, Peterborough County Forest is open, which it is because they normally don't close it, therefore they can keep it open. So we have provided trails to get to the county forest if they need a place to ride. But the place is not on our township roads. Yeah. Okay. Very good. That's, uh, is there any other questions or comments with that? We'll move on to Councillor Pomeroy. You had, uh, we can go through this. Yeah, um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the uh, Quebec Street walkway, I've had some complaints on it. I know you have two. Uh, probably you have two, Hart, but it's uh, 
one individual that wants to drive his car up and down the the walkway. So I think we're going to have to put some more stones um, on both ends. I've had a look at it, and uh, the um, north end, I could drive my my uh, truck through there and come out down the bottom because it, you just swing over on the Pete's driveway. So both ends have to be addressed. Um, it's just too bad that one individual has caused so much much havoc, but he's done that all his life. So um, I don't know how we're I don't know how we're going to deal with him. I know the uh, the lady that uh, reported it said she, he was going so fast the last time that she couldn't uh, get him on her on her camera. So uh, he's uh, definitely lacking a few cards of a full deck, but um, the only way I think we can address that is, is put some more stones out. And I think uh, maybe you've talked to, to Ryan on that. Yeah, Ryan, do you want to go ahead there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, we uh, we had a discussion about that in the last few weeks, and uh, we're looking at installing some more boulders just to restrict that vehicle access through that, that location as well. And we did some in the fall, but uh, certainly there's a need for some more just to help restrict that. Yeah. We also, we also were thinking about some signage as well at the same time, so we're we'll, uh, we're working on that this week. Yeah, I, I think signage would, uh, we should have something there with no motorized vehicles because we don't have any signage there whatsoever. So for, to clear ourselves, um, we should put up some signage because it's, you could still get on it. And if you had a sign there for no motorized vehicles, that would eliminate that problem and get us off the hook. Yeah, Peter, uh, I talked to Peter too, and uh, I know he's talked to Ryan. so. It is being dealt with maybe as soon as today. Um, the signs will take some time to get made, but uh, yeah. um, they are going to tighten things up there. And uh, it's unfortunate that we have to do that, but uh, we'll, we'll get it done anyways. So um, some of these things here, like even Quebec Street, I know that's been dealt with. The, the tenders that have been done for that, uh, for teardown of for uh, Quebec Street, I think that's already dealt with. Is it I not? You're dealing with it, Tim. Ryan, did I or Bob? I heard something about that was put out or something, but uh, go ahead. Maybe, work. maybe the rest of council should know. Yeah. Okay, so um, we have looked at the removal there, and we've gotten some quotes, and uh, we've got the permits filled out and approved. Um, uh, Engage Engineering is going to oversee the uh, actual uh, demolition of it. Uh, so uh, we're just waiting for them to give back their uh, their final comments, and it'll be it's scheduled to be removed this month. So everything's moving forward as previously planned. The only reason I knew about it, I asked about it a couple of weeks ago, and uh, um, I didn't realize it was going to be on here. I would have uh, um, got back to you, Barry, but uh, I did ask about it too a couple of weeks ago. But I usually just phone staff and ask what's going on there. Um, and then the development charges you had on there. I don't know whether there's much we can do with that until we can get public meetings going because there's a process to go through, but we could, I guess, start the ball rolling, um, get a consultant or whatever we got to do to, to get things happening there. Okay, and the other one was a daycare lease. Um, we've touched on it and then we leave it aside. And so what, what are we doing there? Like, uh, you know, there the rent that, that was being paid wouldn't pay for the friggin' hydro down there and the heat. So, uh, you know, we could utilize that, that same space now that they've moved to the school. It's still up in the air too, Barry, as far as how much they need. I, I just started talking with the, uh, the group there and then things shut down. Um, it's kind of messed everything up, but it's just, and now with the social distancing, I, we were supposed to go over there with Bob to meet, um, Kathy just to um, see what they're using it for or how much they need or if they need anything um, even their thing is revolving like it's, it's evolving uh, they're still not totally settled in at the at the school there was some things that they didn't get at the school so um, so it will be dealt with as soon as we can uh, 
start having some meetings and uh, and deal with it before the end of the year. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Mayor, I got one other thing that kind of bothered me on uh, an email was stay away cottagers. I thought that was a quite a blunt um, statement, you know, and Mike Jensen, I think, had a, a, a reply. You know, they are taxpaying citizens, um, and if they uh, use their social distancing, um, I don't know. And to me, it's it's quite a statement because a lot of these people live at their cottages, and I I don't want that to, to go out as a, a detrimental thing from council here because that's the way that that Mike Jensen has has uh, taken it that we are a bunch of turkeys, you know, in, in layman's terms, <laughs> and uh, I really can't can't see that, but. Uh, I just didn't like the the statement. Stay away, cottagers. Like, you know, we've we've relied on cottagers for years and years, and and uh, you know, uh, I I think they have a good rapport with with council, and I I wouldn't like to see that uh, crashed. Yeah, and that's one of the issues all around. Uh, that was a uh, a video from uh, the medical officer of health or whatever. They put out a video, and it wasn't. Or a, it was a actually a, a document that they put out, but it wasn't finished yet. It came through county council, and uh, it was up for maybe an hour or two, and then it came down um, because it it had some flaws in it. But that message is one of those things that most people understand. Some people have a guilty conscience, so it affects them a different way. Um, that's my opinion of it. Is some people aren't doing the right thing, but most are. And that's the message we got to get out because we, I did put out something last week uh, on my own personal page and, you know, said that we are going to want these people back and we do need them and want them to understand that. But uh, just now is not the time if they could, you know, unfortunately the weather was nice this weekend, next weekend it's going to have snow flurries. So maybe it won't be so bad. Uh, um, I'm hoping for the biggest crop of black flies we ever had. Uh, that'll keep people away a little bit, but, uh, um, yeah, the wording in that wasn't good, and maybe that's why it was taken back down. But uh, um, most understand that we're that we need them, and we're all together on this. And um, but there's a lot of people, like I said earlier, that uh, um, the reasoning isn't good enough when there's an order from from the province to uh, go back slowly here. But we're not stupid here. We if you looked around town this weekend. I had calls from the second line. I had calls from 46. I had calls from 48 that they're here anyways. Um, but I really don't think, I think if you had the numbers, it's still probably 50 or 60%. It's not the full, the full crew isn't here yet. There's a lot of people still doing the right thing and uh, um, coming when they can. And I, I think hopefully by the long weekend, I'm, I might be rushing things, but uh, the boat launches and things like that, because I do feel for the, the island people that uh, with the boat launches closed and everybody's posting pictures of how nice it is out on their pontoon boat, um, those things affect the people that are sitting at home doing the right thing. So um, that was wrong and, you know, and I didn't even respond to them. I didn't have the time for to respond to that because sometimes I just take it as a, a guilty conscience and uh, feel in it. But most of them are, if they're here for the summer, it's not directed at those people. It's the ones, I had a, a call from one person that their next door neighbor's been up five times. In the five last, the last week, five weeks, he's been up every weekend and going home. That's the ones Dave Smith will even talk about. We don't want the people coming up for the weekend and going back home and coming up the next weekend. If, but if you live here all summer or you're up here for the summer, so be it. It's uh, they're no they're no more harm than you or I. It's uh, it's the ones that are transporting the the virus, and the virus is in Toronto, and that's what the medical officer health is trying to say is we don't have it here right now, but if a wave comes through here, we'll be shut down all summer. We won't open it up. So um, hopefully it doesn't happen. Um, you know, hopefully, but there is going to be another wave come through, and it's happening in other places right now, and hopefully. It's, 
they are focusing, one of the reports said about the long-term care is gonna be the big focus, that that's, it's obvious that that's the problem area. They even talked about putting staff in there and not letting them come home, but that wouldn't be really logical or it would be hard to do for families, but they were talking on the people going into these long-term care homes that work there would maybe residents there too for until we get through this. But there's a lot of challenges around that to make that work. But uh, um, yeah, I, we all got that letter and I don't know if anybody responded to it. I didn't take the time to respond to it. I, I responded to a lot of other ones, but that one, I just left it alone. Um, so. Yeah, and I think folk, uh, well, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're sending out the word too. And, you know, they're, they're doing their part. And uh, I think it comes right down to this, that we're all in it together. And, you know, together we stand, divided we fall. And it's one of those situations. And, and I just don't like a, a real blunt statement to some people. Uh, tick, yeah. it, it tick me off. Yeah, Art. Yeah, no, I was just gonna kind of echo what Barry said there, Jim. We got to be careful. Um, these people are members of our community, right? And as long as they're practicing their social distancing and they're not having big gatherings, I, I don't see the difference between if they're here or in Toronto. This was all started, I think, to try and alleviate, you know, our health system being overrun here in Peterborough County. Well, that hasn't happened. There's been a lot of things put out there by our higher leaders and the people in the know that really haven't come to fruition. You know, and a lot of people out there are saying, we have to go on with our lives. So as long as they're practicing, you know, safe precautions, I can't see some of these things have to start being lifted. We can't just keep saying, what if or or with the next wave and that's all fear that all that fear was put out there a month ago and a lot of these things like i said they just haven't panned out the way we were told they were gonna and if we're just gonna keep reacting to all these what ifs we're gonna be in a worse place four or six months from now it's time to move on take the precautions we need to but start moving forward and that's what they said the reason the numbers are low here is because we've been doing a good job but be prepared, um, and it's common sense. I mean, if you've got that many people in Toronto, and that's what they're saying in the Muskokas, as soon as they open it up, then it's the ones that are coming every weekend. It's not the ones that are staying here. You're totally right. They're part of the community. Um, they're no more harmed than you or I, but it's the ones that are going through your gas station on Friday night and then on Sunday night or coming out on the weekend to fill their boat tanks um, because the marinas are closed. Those are the ones that are going to cause a problem and uh, if they bring something with them. And that's, you know what, it's gone through this far. And that's what I think uh, Ford's trying to say is uh, Premier Ford is saying that we, you know, we went this far, let's get through this and, it, you know, we'll, we'll start to come out the other side. So um, totally right though, they're part of our community and uh, we don't want to discourage them from coming, but it's just, you know. And I'm with you, but just uh, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of kind of, few things you just said there is when I read the papers, I'm hearing about this, the next wave and what are we going to do about in the fall? We're not even there yet. And already we're reacting to these what ifs that are being put out there in my mind by the media and these other people. Yeah. So, they're just watching the models from the other where who have already been through it. So um, it's obvious it's going to come through again. It might be in October. Like we always get a flu in October. It might be something like that, but uh, we'll just keep going. The We've always survived, Jim. We've always survived. Yeah. I feel sorry for that PSW that died last week. She got it Monday and died Friday and she was 58 years old. So um, those are the ones that I'm looking at. So, but anyway, we could talk about that part forever. We all have our own views on it. I think the, I think the governments are doing an amazing job uh, working together and we're trying to follow along and as hard as it is, we've done really well. And uh, I think we should just get through this and it'll, it, it's starting to happen now. Things are starting to loosen, um, you know, and it's going to be a different summer. This summer is going to be a complete write off, um, but you know, it'll hopefully get better. Did you have something Dave before I move on? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, so my part of it there was the Havelock rail. I talked to most of you last week or all of you last week and just had a thought about the, uh, um, it's had its challenges, 
but there's an opportunity here. North Forest to put out a newsletter. I think it's going out this week, actually. They just did a, a separate newsletter to mail out. We have an opportunity with the Havelock Rail there. Um, they have some uh, um, space available. And for the cost of doing a newsletter, we could probably take advantage of the Havelock Rail and uh, maybe pick up two or three pages. We already have a page already with updates um, that we do every month. But if we were to each do a little story for the June edition, plus staff could maybe do uh, a, an update on, say, building or parks and rec or roads department, we could we could actually make a special edition for the Havelock Rail there for June, and uh, help them get over this uh, little hump. So it works for both ways. Uh, right now, as it is, it's hard to get advertisers because of the. Uh, um, with nothing open um, and a lot of them run out this week or this month. So um, he had talked about suspending it until September, but I was just, you know, I talked to you about the thoughts of uh, doing a special edition and most seemed uh, interested in that. And um, I think it would be good to, to do a real update to the community or to all of, uh, like it, it does circulate quite an area. It doesn't get everyone, but it gets, it goes to a lot of people's doors and a lot of people enjoy getting it. So uh, um, I, I would probably have to put a number on it as far as, uh, um, you know, we could do it for the next meeting, but it would probably be, you know, we'd probably be looking at maybe $1,700 to, you know, 2000. It could be uh, depending on it's about $800 a page, um, somewhere in there, uh, depending on how much advertising is on it. But if we were to take a center section out of it, and you know we could each do a little story ourselves and, and then get the department updates and uh it might be a timely one going into june um you know a lot of people will receive that and be right on top of what we've got on the go so um what's your thoughts on that anybody got any dave oh i like the idea myself some of the things that i'd like to see in it is what we discussed today with uh with uh, Bob in regards to wastewater and what's going down our toilets. Um, there's all kinds of things that we could put in there that would help us get the message out. Yeah, I think like your ATV thing there, there's a good story there. Um, Hart with economic development, uh, you know, Larry with uh, chamber, Barry with library or whatever, uh, source water, whichever, or just a general story. You don't have to do those separate things, but just something on where, what you've been dealing with over the last two months and, uh, um, you know, or where you'd like to see it go. But, Art? Well, yeah, kind of along what Dave was getting at in terms of that, or I think they discussed the bottle program when Lynn discussed it earlier. So things like that that we've been working on that might be coming either this summer or later this fall that we can kind of, get out there to the public and promote a little in terms of what what we've been doing or what we will be doing here. Okay, Barry? Yeah, I see John sitting there and, and uh, I just wondered if he had anything to report for us. Uh, nothing to report at this time to you, Mr. Mayor. Nothing to report at this time. Okay, thank you. There might be an opportunity for a you know, a little story in the, um, you know, in the paper next month as far as from the building department, uh, you know, update on that. But Dave, go ahead. One of the other, through you, Mr. Mayor, one of the other things that could be, it could be uh, put in the paper also the rail is, uh, I've been getting several calls as I'm sure the rest of you have on what, if our road projects are gonna go ahead this summer and, uh, the importance of them and the importance of ditching and so on and so on. So an update on in that department is, is another thing that we can talk about in the rail. So, yeah, so we have time and if everybody's in favor of it, uh, um, you know, I think, you know, we have the whole month. He, he, we would have to probably have it ready for the beginning of June to go out then. So it gives everybody a lot of time if we decide today on it. But uh, go ahead, Dave. A question for Wendlin, perhaps Wendlin. Um, the money that we have, we haven't been advertising in the local papers too much, have we? So, have we saved any money that we could switch over and do the rail? Um, 
I'd have to look at that. I'm just looking at some different uh, high level cash flow um, with the budget and I've got a year to date report out to the management team right now. So I can look at that and see if, where we can maybe, um, it would still go in the same department, but might be underspent somewhere else that could uh, accommodate that. Okay, thank you. Okay, Hart, go ahead. Yeah, just to that, um, I don't know how the rest of the year is gonna pan out, but I imagine that the rest of our conferences will be canceled for this year, won't they? Yeah. I would think so. so. I think there could be a little bit extra money there and conference money that yep. could be allocated somewhere else. Yeah, I'm Barry was I in that council initiative money there. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Going forward, we are going to have to wendle in uh, a lot of people what they're doing now is start to get a report for the impact this has had on the municipality because we've all had a huge hit, even just with the interest rates and things like that that we've waived. I know um, Sal went talking on extending another 60 days on their um, there's a cost yeah. to do that and then uh, we should and then maybe after the next meeting we'll be able to start on planning as a council on how we're going to come out of this and you know some of those things might be uh, roads but I think for the most part those things were already we passed our budget just before we went into this it's just uh, there might be a little few glitches along the way. Um, Barry go ahead. Yeah well I know the AMO conference has been cancelled I got a notification last Friday I think so that's, you know, I, I don't know how many were going. I know there was, I think Larry was going, myself. And, he, and were you going hard for that one? No, I wasn't scheduled to go okay. there. So there's, you know, there's enough money there for to pay for the, uh, even with one, for to pay for the rail advertising. Mm -hmm. so, and we can cancel out. I got to get a hold of, of, um, who somebody today anyway okay. barry are they giving back the total registration and yes. then we'd have to look at the accommodations to see yeah. what the hotels will be doing yeah before june 6 the um okay. it'll give you back your full registration and uh then we have to also apply for the um uh for the hotel accommodations right. so there, there's the two items but um if we do them right away we can get get full uh, full compensation okay add larry and then dave did you yeah just a quick question we were talking about uh we were talking about uh projects for the summer and roads so i guess a question to ryan um with what's going on is that going to affect any of the projects that uh, we had scheduled in the roads department uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at this time, there's we don't anticipate any uh, any cancellations of any projects or anything. There may be a little bit of delay, but at this point, everything is still on schedule as planned. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Deputy Mayor Drow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank Councillor Webb for bringing that subject up about the conferences. Uh, we still have one conference at the NAV Center in, in September. That hasn't been canceled yet. And uh, who knows, it might be, but hopefully it won't. That's one of the Eastern conferences that I think our municipality really gets a lot out of. So hopefully it won't be canceled, but if it is, it is. But I, I guess I would ask, you know, has she had any word from that conference, the OMC? That that would be cancelled yet. Who was that too, Dave? Maybe Bianca. I don't know who's looking after that. The conferences now, but has has any of the staff that might be looking after that had any um, communications with the Eastern Ontario Trails or uh, the Eastern Ontario Conference? I think Bob yeah. had something there. Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin, typically uh, uh, Margaret is dealing with those registrations. And at this point, uh, as far as I'm aware, that particular conference, we have not received any word on. Um, so stay tuned. We shall see. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Um, so there should be a number on that as far as uh, like if we were to take three extra pages or something like that. I'm not sure what the exact number is, but um, like I used the number 1700. I just wonder what council's thoughts are if we um, use something like that, 17 or 1800 dollars, or if you want to, we should have an up to number. Um, is that okay with you then, Wendland? As far as uh, okay, Hart. Oh, I was just going to say, can we not wait till the next meeting or is it? Well, as long as we know, we need to confirm whether we're doing it or not because we'll have to start getting it together now. That's all. Yep. Um, yep. The number, I guess we could do it later, but it would be nice to get it out of the way now and then we know where we stand and people can start getting their, their articles together over the next couple of weeks type of thing. So, Barry? Yeah, hopefully, um, <clears throat> you know, the rate payers think this is all right too, because uh, you know we, we could be classed as subsidizing as a paper, and uh, I I don't want that to happen. Um, maybe a page, Jim. I can't see unless you know you go on and on and on about nothing that uh, we would have that much news for for everyone out there. Yeah, I'm sure there is enough. Like, I'm not sure what, uh, I haven't seen North Kawartha's uh, letter that they put out this week, but uh, I'm sure it wouldn't take much to, like, just even in the mail out and everything, uh, it wouldn't take long to, uh, you know, eat up a thousand bucks easy. Uh, uh, Larry, go ahead. Yeah, well, um, we always do a summer um, info letter anyway, and so there's a cost associated with that. So if you offset that towards what it may cost for the Havelock Rail, and I'm sure if we touch base with uh, Havelock Rail, they can tell you uh, what it's going to cost you for one to three pages. So we have an idea. Okay. Sorry, I'm, it's breaking up on me here, but <laughs> I don't know. Internet connection unstable. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay, move by Councillor. Uh, web that we uh, and the, the number it's an up to hopefully we don't need it all but uh, um, up to 17 sure okay, okay. moved by Councillor Webb that we we approach the rail to uh, get an article uh, some some articles in seconded by Councillor Ellis all in favor so I'm not seeing everybody's hands but uh, is anybody okay Only two. Okay, there's only two. So you know what? Um, that's fine. If uh, I'm sorry, there was three of you. One, two, three. I'm uh, counting myself. Okay. All right. So Dave and Larry, or Dave and Barry. Uh, okay, that's fine. There's three of us there. Carrie. No, I, I have another question, Jim. On that, when you get the uh, thing from what is it, Duro Dummer? No, not Duro Dummer. We're North Florida. North Kawartha, could you uh, maybe relay, relay that to the rest of, of council so that we know what we're looking at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Get that today. Okay. okay. All right, then. And so I have something here. It's not on my computer, but it's on my uh, paperwork. Bob, you had clerk acting. Do you have a report? I do not, Mayor Martin. Okay, I don't know what that is. Just says um, summary of business and okay, it's just the end of our our thing there. It's on a separate page, so I don't have it on the computer, but I had it on my paperwork. So that's all I had here. So uh, um, you know, a motion to uh, receive all them reports and uh, moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? Carried. Okay, we don't have any bylaws. Um, so we do have a confirming bylaw before we leave this meeting. So uh, look for a confirming bylaw. Councillor Webb. Is there somebody second it? Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor? Carried. And then we'll look for a motion to adjourn. Uh, moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Webb. All, all in favor? Carried. Okay, so we're going to break away from this and uh, um, Bianca will send out an email and we'll go into a closed session. Right, Bob? Yep, that's perfect.
Okay, thank you everyone. Thanks, Jim.